Hello, this is Spanish 1 Unit 3 Test Review. Please keep in mind that although this is a review, it does not substitute for your actual work or in study. It is just a guide to help you. You're responsible for all the vocabulary in the unit. Please refer to your student guide and your textbook to uh, fully understand all the vocabulary. Please ask a teacher or you can uh, post a question to the uh, YouTube uh, video uh, as a reply, as a response to, um, to this material uh, to get an answer as well. So please keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you can associate classes with verbs and items for school. So, for example, lapis, carpeta, calculadora. Make sure you're familiar with his vocabulary items. Uh, lapis, pencil. Carpeta is a binder. Calculadora is, of course, calculator. And remember, all these items have a gender. It's either masculine or feminine in Spanish. So, lapis is masculine. El lapis is the pencil. Los lapices are the pencils. Carpeta is uh, feminine, and you can tell usually uh, feminine nouns will end in an A in Spanish, so these match the pattern. Carpeta, binder, and calculadora is, of course, calculator. Libro, el libro, masculine, means book. Diccionario is masculine, means dictionary. Mochila is feminine. La mochila is uh, feminine, uh, means backpack. And cuaderno, cuaderno is a folder. This is masculine. El cuaderno. And la tarea. Tarea is feminine and it means homework. You might be able to match these with different subjects that you might have. For example, calculadora would go with matemáticas. No? All right. Or maybe ciencias. Now, diccionario might go with clase español. Make sure you can use the verb estar to give the location. To ask a location, you would say, ¿Dónde está? Or in the plural, you would say, ¿Dónde están? These are uh, locations in Spanish. These are relative locations. So let's look at these. Debajo de means underneath. Debajo de. Encima de is on top. On top of. Encima de. You notice that they all end in de, even though English doesn't use of for each of these equivalents. Al lado de means next to. Delante de is in front of. And detrás de means behind. And you're going to use estar, a form of estar, with these. For example, um, la calcula calculadora está al lado de la computadora. Uh, the calculator is next to the computer. Make sure you can conjugate AR verbs. And here they are. We're going to conjugate the verb hablar here. Hablar, H-A-B-L-A-R, which means to speak, to talk. That's called an infinitive because we have not conjugated. We have not put it with any person yet that's doing the talking. We're just saying to talk. In English, we use the word to in front of the verb. In Spanish, you use an ending. It's going to be A-R, E-R, I-R. And we're, going to foc we're focusing on the A-R verbs in this unit. So when you conjugate an AR verb, you're going to follow this pattern. Yo hablo. To say I speak, you can just say hablo. You do not need to say yo, because hablo makes it clear that you're talking about I. Hablo. Tu hablas. You speak. Or you talk. Right? So hablas is the ending for tu. And therefore, you don't need to say tu except if you want to uh, emphasize or uh, clarify. El, ella, usted, habla. So for el, use habla. For ella, habla. And usted uses habla. It's very important to know what these pronouns mean. El means he. El means he. Ella is she. And usted is you, but, uh, but uh, speaking with respect to an adult. Tú... You use with friends, family, etc. People you would normally call by their first name, even if you don't know their first name. So he or she speaks or is speaking or is talking, and usted habla also. You are talking. So usted habla, tú hablas, both mean you 
speak and it's singular it's only one person that you're addressing nosotros hablamos we are talking for example you could say hablamos español we're speaking spanish and the last one is hablan ellos ellas ustedes hablan so all three of these will use hablan and if you look at above here it matches these it's just the plural so él is he and ellos means they and so it's a group of uh, men or boys or it's a mixed group ellos would be the you would use the masculine plural for a mixed group as well so as long as there's one boy or man in there you're going to use the masculine plural for feminine ella plural would be ellas they so ellos and ellas mean the same thing in english that's the word they in spanish uh, or in english they ellos ellas and usted would become ustedes for the plural it means you guys so it's uh it would be two or more people that you're addressing as a group so you all are y'all are you guys in english we say that a lot to to talk about more than one person now we could use the word you as well but um we wouldn't be able to tell the difference except for the context. In Spanish, it's very clear. It's going to be hablan. It's going to end in that N there. Now, once you can do that, you could do it with any AR verb, any regular AR verb that you come across. For example, with estudiar, you, could, you can conjugate it the same way. If you want to say that I study, if you want to say I study, I'm studying, you would simply use Yo estudio, or simply estudio. If you're uh, if you're studying, I would say estudias, right? I'll follow the same pattern as 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 uh, hablar here. Okay, for she is studying, I would use ella estudia. Ella estudia matemáticas. She's studying math. And for nosotros, you could use estudiamos. We study. And ellos estudian, ellas estudian, ustedes estudian. And this will work for any of these verbs here in any other regular AR verbs. And sorry, I had to fix that patinar. It should have that AR at the end, so you can use patino, patinas, patina. It's just an autocorrect thing. Uh, patina, patina would be here. El patina, ella patina, usted patina, of course. But that's the infinitive. Okay, next we have the verb estar. You should know how to conjugate this in the present tense. Estar means to be, and we use it for location or how somebody feels. And we already talked about things like como estas, or you can ask somebody, how are you doing? Como estas, como está usted? And you can say, estoy bien, gracias, right? I'm doing fine, thank you. But you can use uh, estar to talk about location as well. So, yo estoy. The yo form would be estoy. I am. Estas, you are. Está, he is, she is, or you are. Está. Nosotros would be estamos, we are. And the last one, ellos están, they are. And ellas would mean the, mean the same thing, but feminine, ellas están. And ustedes están. Here's a couple of examples. Los lápices están al lado de la computadora. The pencils are next to the computer. And it could be singular. El disquete está encima de la mesa so if you're going to say is you're going to use esta if you're going to use are for objects use están it's pretty simple because you're saying they right for the plural and for the singular you're saying it which is either masculine or feminine so it's going to be esta so for objects you're going to use esta or están and for people you could use uh, all of these now um, definite and indefinite articles Definite, indefinite articles. Definite means the. In English, we would say the word the. Okay, uh, it's specific. Uh, where where is the pencil? You're you're talking about a specific one. Well, when you say a or some for plural, uh, you're not being specific. You're just uh, you're just saying what you know. Do you have one in general? So do you have a pencil? It doesn't mean any specific one that you're mentioning. You know that you're referring to. You just want any pencil that's available, right? So that's the difference here. In Spanish, though, we have masculine and feminine, and we have 
singular and plural. It's not always reflected in English. So el and la mean the for masculine and feminine. So you can have you can have el lapis, el disquete, etc. For feminine, it might be la mochila, the backpack, la la mesa, the uh, the the table. Okay. For plural, you're gonna change el to los. And it's the the noun will be plural as well. So, uh, los lapices would be the pencils. Um, los disquetes, the discs. And then las, of course, you can change any la to las by making a plural. Las mochilas, the backpacks. Las mesas, the tables. Las computadoras, the computers. In English, though, we just have the word the for all of them. In Spanish, you have four. That you'll need to choose. You'll need to choose the right one, depending on the gender and number of what you're talking about. That's how you do that. Next one, you have un, una and unos and unas. Un and una mean a, and again masculine, feminine. Un lapis, a pencil. Un reloj, a clock. Un escritorio, a desk. And then una. You could you can put anything we could put la with you could put una with right so una computadora a computer una mesa a table una mochila a backpack and then the word for some is uh, plural but in Spanish you have masculine and feminine of course so unos lapices some pencils unos relojes some uh, clocks unos libros some books and then unas unas calculadoras some calculators. Right, so it's still plural, but it is feminine. So it's very important to understand those, and you'll need to know those for your test. To answer questions, in answering questions, make sure you keep in mind who's being addressed. If the subject of the question is tú or usted, answer with yo. ¿Dónde estás? Where are you? Yo estoy en la cafetería. I am in the cafeteria. Ustedes, if the question is ustedes, you guys, you're going to answer with nosotros or nosotras. We. Any names with tú, right, like Marcos, Sara y tú, you're going to answer with nosotros or the names and yo. So, again, you have the tú becoming yo. And the same thing goes with usted because tú and usted both, both mean you in the singular. If the answer is yo, if the question is yo, like donde estoy yo, or where am I, the answer, of course, can be tú or usted, you're, you're there, you're here, whatever. If the question is nosotros, the answer is ustedes. All right, where are we? You all are whatever location. And any names of yo would be ustedes. So uh, they and I... It'll be you guys is the answer. So keep that in mind. This is how you would answer in English as well. If the question is you, you're going to answer with I. Here's some examples. ¿Hablas tú español? The answer is si sí, hablo español or yo hablo español. Do you speak Spanish? Yes, I speak Spanish. So you see the question, you have to change that pronoun. You have to change the person because it's asking you and you're going to come back with I. ¿Hablan ustedes español? Do y'all, do you guys speak Spanish? Si, sí, hablamos español. Yes, we speak Spanish. So you have from the change from ustedes to nos, so nosotros because the question was for you guys. So every time you ask a question of uh, including you or you all, you're going to have a change because you're going to answer for yourself. And in this case, you're answering for yourself and others. So you gotta have to change it, just like in English. Habla Marco, habla Marco y tú español. Does Marco do Marco and you speak Spanish? Okay, now they're asking about another person and you. So you're going to speak for yourself and Marco. Si hablamos español, yes, we speak Spanish. Or you could say si Marco y yo hablamos español. He and I speak Spanish. So that's just a way to answer questions. And just keep that in mind. Telling time. 
Make sure you understand how to tell time in Spanish. You have la hora, que hores, what time is it? And then here you have how to tell time. Es la una, it's one o'clock. And notice it's different. It's different than the others because one is singular. So you would say es la una. And it's la because we're talking about la hora, the time, the hour. Son las dos, son las tres, etc. It's two o'clock, it's three o'clock, it's four o'clock. And you just know your numbers, right? Now to add minutes, you can simply say y cinco, y diez, y cuarto. Y cuarto, cuarto would be quarter. It's not cuatro, it's not four. Notice the R and T are reversed here. It's y cuarto, or you can say y quince if you want. Y veinte. 20 minutes past, y 25, 25 minutes, y media would be half, half hour. So it's half past. So en las dos, y media would be, it's 2.30. Now, if you want to go past that, past the 30, you can keep counting from 30, 35, 40, 45. But you can also use menos for the next hour because of many times, just like in English, we would say it's 20 till 2. So it's 140 or 20 till 2. In Spanish, you can do the same thing with menos. You can say, son las dos menos cinco. It would be 155. Uh, and these are equivalents down here. This is really nice to see because you can, you can um, well, actually, these aren't equivalents here. But you could, you could, Make equivalents. If it's two fifty-five, son las tres menos cinco. Right, it's it's five till three. But you can also say son las dos y cincuenta y cinco. Son las tres menos diez. It's ten till three, or it's two fifty. So, and you when you see menos, remember, it's the next hour, but you have to go back. So it's still the hour less. Okay. Para las doce se puede decir. For 12 o'clock, you can say las doce en punto. It's exactly 12 o'clock. And mediodía is um, a noon. La medianoche is midnight. Otras expresiones. De la mañana is in the morning. De la tarde is in the afternoon. And de la noche is at night. And that is it for your review. Buena suerte. Good luck. And um, please feel free to look over your other videos for this unit for even more review. Gracias.